This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so welcome to Digital Library Resources. Um, we will be going over um, OverDrive, Libby, RB Digital, Canopy, Mango Languages, and Universal Class. Um, when I prepped for the class, we did not have Creative Bug just yet, um, but we do have it now as of last week, and you can find that information on our website, um, which is clinton.lib.ny.us. And so today's goals, um, I'm just going to go do a brief run through of all of these resources. And it's not going to be an in-depth guide, but hopefully I can answer any basic questions you have. Um, and when you're done with a webinar, hopefully you'll know what you need to get started right away. And um, you'll use one of the resources shown. And of course, if you need any help, um, some of the, our team tech will be doing virtual tech help. And you can just email her at clinton.techhelp at gmail.com with your name, phone number, and what you need help with. Um, and she will be um, doing a 30 minute appointment on Zoom uh, to help you guys. And if you have your device, you can follow along, but I would highly recommend just listening and watching for now. Um, as I said, I will be posting the slide show on our website. And also I do have a PDF of quick start guides for all of the resources. So if you need help downloading the app or you don't know how to register, it will be on there. Um, Jenny, I have a question. This is Lisa, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, will these resources also be available at the start of next school year? Do you have a, is there like a subscription where it's on a yearly basis or how does it work? Oh, so all of these are always available with your library card, as long as your card is valid. Okay, so you don't anticipate the library, say, doing away with any of them? Um, as of right now, I, I don't um, have any other information about that. Um, things are changing, but as of right now, I can tell you we still have all of these available. Okay, okay. great. Um, so to get started, there's a couple things you need. Of course, an internet connection, um, a valid library card, which just means your account is not expired and you don't have fines over $10. Um, you need to enter your PIN. Um, if you don't enter your PIN, we can reset it for you. And you'll need an email address and a compatible device. Um, and that just means, for example, um, Libby may not work with audiobooks on your Kindle. Um, so, let's see. Okay. So, let's just quickly go over the differences and similarities um, between OverDrive and Libby. Um, they look very similar. You're looking at screenshots of what each of them look like. Um, they are made by the same company, and OverDrive did come first and is uh, compatible across more devices, most notably with Kindles. Um, and Libby was designed to be more user-friendly, so it's more sleek and simple and easier to use. Um, has anyone used either of these before, just out of curiosity? OverDrive or Libby? No? Okay. All right. No. Okay. Um, I personally use Libby and I like it, but I also have OverDrive um, just as a backup. Um, and there's no hard and fast rule for using which one, just whatever works and what you prefer. But um, overall, you can use OverDrive if you have a Kindle, an Android, or an iOS, which is Apple device. Um, you like to read books on many devices, and this will be important because OverDrive will send you an email for holds, whereas Libby, um, will, it will just be an, an app notification. So if you don't see, if you don't use your device, um, you might miss the notification. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really up to you, um, just whatever you prefer. Um, so also, if you want recommendations based on titles you read, OverDrive will recommend them to you based on what you search through and what you favorite, et cetera. Um, 
you want to recommend titles for your library to purchase, that is an option that's only available in OverDrive for now. So if you see something, um, let's say a second in a series and we don't have it on OverDrive, you can send um, a recommendation for a purchase request and you get four a month. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, or if you want to transfer audiobooks to an MP3 player from your computer, um, like I said, OverDrive is more compatible across um, more devices. And for Libby, um, if you use an Android or iOS device, you want a simpler, cleaner interface, um, or you primarily use one device to browse, download, read, or listen to digital books. Um, like I said, the notification is through the app. Um, and you want interesting curated reads. This is something I just discovered yesterday. Um, Libby does have a list of um, just fun curated reads that they have, and it, it's way more um, more of a variety on Libby than OverDrive. And you'll see what I mean. I'm going to show you. Okay, so let's switch over to OverDrive, and I will share my screen in just a second. Okay, tell me if you see, do you see the OverDrive page? Okay, do you see it right now? Yes, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Okay, great. I don't know if you can make it bigger. Um, are you viewing um, any camera through OT meeting? I so, see I so I, my screen is maximized right now, but I'm wondering if you're seeing any cameras on GoToMeeting. That might interfere with how big your screen is. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I'm good. I'll, I'll try to make it a little bigger. Okay. Does anyone else have the same issue? Yeah, right now I see six books, so. Yes, yeah, six books. Yes, exactly. And, and I also see who's who's on. So I can shut everybody off on the top there, the cameras. You can yeah. hide cameras. Yes. Where are they? How do I do that? <laughs> I'm lucky I got okay. here. <laughs> so do you see my screen now? It should be over on GoToMeeting. Um, on the top, it should say active cameras. Yes. Okay, click that and try hide everyone. I view everyone, but I don't see about active cameras. You don't see active cameras. On view everyone. There you go. Who's talking? Hide right. everyone. Got it. Hide everyone. Does that help? Um. So I'm going to switch over to my screen again. Right now, I just see six books. All right. That's okay. the OverDrive page. But is it big enough for you to view? Um, when you, I think, are you scrolling it? Did you? Just I am scroll scrolling it? it. Yep. I meet Libby. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then it says May's National Home. So I mostly just see the top of the page. Wait a minute. I see a see all. Click on that. No, you got to click on it. No. <laughs> what do I got to click on that one? <laughs> Um, three um, percent. I can shrink it, I guess. Right? Zoom out. Mm. I'm. No, nope, I'm just I'm not seeing sure what you see. Books. I I only see the six books, and I don't see anything else. Right, but so do you see a website like a a browser? So, so how many of you are viewing this on a larger device, as a like a laptop or a computer? I'm on a computer. Okay. So you should see something that looks like my browser, and 
I'm moving my mouse right now and there are six books across, but this is the overdrive page. Um, For some reason, I'm not seeing that. I'm so all I have is. I'm on so a map. OK, let's try. Oh, I did just receive a message. Oh, it says digital library. Fine. OK. And there's a little thing on the edge. That's kind of right. So it says digital library resources because that's my tab. Mm -hmm. And then I'm switching over to another tab to show you what OverDrive looks like. All right. Um, and this may be something on your end. I'm not sure without looking at your screen what the issue is. I see six books. Right. So let me go through. Um, and like I said, this will be available online if you are having a lot of trouble viewing it. Um, it will be available online and hopefully it will be at the regular size. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to resolve that issue Okay. right now. Okay. 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 So let's uh, switch over. Okay. So we're in overdrive. So this will be the page you see on your tablet or phone. It will just look narrower, but this is basically what you see. Um, I'm just going to do a quick scroll. Go to meeting is not helpful. Uh, Where's it? I don't know. Is, okay, I will have to mute. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so that's what it looks like, and you see that they do curate. Um, you know, very basic categories and genres like documentary films, fiction. Um, so let's go back to the top. Okay, to search for a book, you would just do the magnifying glass here. And if you know of your title, you can just type it in through search. But I'm going to go over to advanced right here. And this will allow you to really narrow your search down. Um, so let's say I am only looking for a particular author, for example, I would just fill in the author. I can narrow it down by subjects um, and availability. Um, so especially right now, there's probably a lot of books checked out and not everything is available all at once. So if you just wanna see what you can check out immediately, I would suggest taking off av available now. Um, and then I would say formats is one to look for as well. If you just want an audiobook or if you just want an ebook, that is something you would check off as well. Um, you can also just do something like, let's say I just want to find all audiobooks. I would just check off all audiobooks without filling any of these fields. And that will show me just audiobooks. Okay, so there's about 4,739. Right here will tell you whether it's available immediately for checkout. If it says waitlist, that means you'll have to um, put a hold on it. Down here, it tells you the format, audiobook. Of course, we checked up audiobooks. Um, click here for borrow, and this will just save it to your um, wish list. Let's say you're just looking through a bunch of books and you just want to save this for um, later reference without putting a hold on it or anything. That's the button you would click. And by clicking that, the little check mark, you know it's there. Um, now you see up here, there is a notification and that is because before I did this class, I put a hold on something and I do want to show you what it looks like when your hold is ready. You'll get an email notification, first of all. Um, and the notification here will tell you, look, I only have one day to borrow this. Um, so I can hit borrow or I can hit deliver later. And that just means your hold will be deferred um, and will be given to the next person in line. But you'll be um, at the front of the list. So if you find yourself with too many holds coming in, this is a handy feature that they just implemented, I believe. Um, let's see. 
you can read it in like 10 minutes. It's not even really reading. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said you can read it in like 10 minutes. <laughs> this book? Small, well, yeah, that, that mole one, yeah. Oh, mole. yes, yes. It's a children's book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so let's go to, um, I'll show you. So under my account, I'll show you the other item that I have. So here you can see what I have on hold. This one is available. This one is not. Um, if I wanted to suspend the hold, that's where I would do it. And this is also where I would manage my holds. So I went to my account up here and holds. If you want to see what you have checked out, which I don't believe I have anything checked out, but it would be under loans. Oh, I do. Uh, that's right. That's right. I do. Um, so this is what I would see. If you do have a Kindle, you can port it over. Um, and that is something that Overdrive can do um, for eBooks. Um, if you want, if I want to read it now in browser, I can. If you're on your tablet, you'll just see read on this app. Um, any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Just let me know. Okay. Um, and let's see. So the wish list is what I just mentioned before. That's how you would access it here. Remember, I just saved this item, and so that's where it would reside. Um, rated titles, not very useful. Recommendations. So if I had recommended anything for purchase, it would show up here. Um, and we can do that really quick. Let me just show you. I'll go to subjects. I guess I would need a book that's not available. Hmm. I do know, but that's not available. Okay, so does everyone see this page here? So I did a search. I just happened to know the book, Invisible Women, which I read as a physical book, and I wanted to see if it was available as an ebook. As it turns out, the one I'm looking for is not because you can see this is all that is available. And below that, it says didn't find what you were looking for, and I didn't, it's because this is the book I was looking for, and it's not owned. So down here is where I could recommend it if I wish to. Um, and I would just click that, and now it's recommended. And that will just show up under recommendations. Okay, that about covers it for Overdrive, I think. Um, any questions so far? I would take the silence as a no. <laughs> um, and let's go over to I, Libby. So Jenny, it's yeah. Sue. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took me a minute to get unmuted. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, so to get to OverDrive, we just put in the website. You, I think you were already there, so I don't know how I'm you got there. I'm already there. Yeah, so let's talk about that very briefly. Let me just open a new tab. So are you trying to do this on um, a handheld device or let's say Laptop. your Laptop. Laptop. Okay. So you can go to our website. I do not remember the link off the top of my head, which is why I'm saying this. So on the website, there's e-resources. And I would just click that. So it looks like the link is mhls.overdrive.com, and that just stands for Mid Hudson Library System. But you would click this Overdrive link. Okay. And it would take you there. Um, of course, now that I'm logged in, it's not going to show you. Um, 
but I can log out really quick and it's just, you know, you find the login button. Let's sign out. Um, and on your, if anyone wants to download, let's say on the app on their tablet, like how I use it, you would just go to your app store or play store and search for overdrive and install it. Um, and if it is your first time logging in, you will be asked to make an account. Um, so this is the page you would see when you when you click um, the OverDrive link on um, the library's website. Um, and you would just go to sign in right here. Thinking. <laughs> Sure, why it's taking so long. Okay, let's give it a second. I'm just going to pop over to this tab. Um, and I was going to mention this actually. Um, so, this page, e resources, has a list of all um, the offerings we have available. Um, so this is the catalog, this is Overdrive and Libby, the blue links are clickable. Um, this is Tumble Books, um, which is more for kids, um, which is why I haven't covered it as much. Um, but they do have a lot of awesome um, books with sounds, animation, and music. So that's worth checking out if you have um, young children. Um, Canopy, um, RB Digital Universal Class. Um, I will say Universal Class does not have um, an app, so it will be through our website um, or through um, a desktop where you would access it. Um, Mango Languages and Creative Bug. Oh, I got an error. Jenny, when you say what we have, is that what the Mid-Hudson Library has, or is that just what Clinton has? Good question. So this is what Clinton has. Um, I know some libraries have um, some slightly different offerings, but this is what, um, like, if your home library is Clinton, this is what you have access to. Okay, so if my home if I went to, like, the Star Library, I wouldn't be able mm -hmm. to access stuff they have um i know they have very similar offerings but i do not believe so um yeah because i think i went through on pine plains or something and tried to do the online learning and for some reason it didn't like yeah work. hard number so okay all right thanks. i know um so for example i know the town of ulster library which is in a, you know ulster county they have hoopla which we do not have here um and that's just because they they purchase it, um, but they also do not have Creative Book, which we have. So it is dependent on which library is your home library. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, I am not sure why OverDrive is misbehaving, but um, Sue, does that answer your question about how to log in to OverDrive? Um, hopefully, this is not. Yes, ah, okay. thank you. Okay, yeah. so this is what you would see. It took a second. When you go to log in um, through our page and you would, I have an account already, so I just did sign in. Um, if not, you will have to register um, somewhere. It's on here. As I said, there is um, a quick start guide. Um, I'm not gonna, it seems like it's taking a little bit. So. If you don't mind, I will go over to Libby now. Okay, let's do that. Um, with Libby, when you first log in, it will have a bunch of prompts that ask you, um, you know, have you had a library 
Do you have a library card? Um, have you registered? And you would just follow the prompts. It's very easy. It's a question on a page, so it shouldn't be difficult to log in. Um, but this is what you would see when you get into Libby. This is the shelf. And this is the library page. So with Libby, it's really easy. You see there is your um, settings, your little profile. If I click that, all your options will pop out. That's the only menu here. And this is where you can add a library. Um, so let's say you have a different library system, like um, your public library right in the city. You can do add a library. Um, you can change what you read with. So if you read on a Kindle, you can check that off here. If you just want to use Libby, you can just check that there. Um, and it'll tell you that your hold is ready um, if you have a notification. So Overdrive and Libby will share that information. Okay, so over here is where you have your search, the magnifying glass. If I know a title, I can just go ahead and type it in. And if I start to type, it will start to pop up. You can also get more options over here. So see how Libby has fewer options um, available. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you don't need, let's say, the Lexal scores that Overdrive has. Um, but this is all you're dealing with. Um, so it's pretty easy. Enter a title here or author. Um, I would recommend. Um, this is just a tip that you do not enter both title and author. Sometimes if you have a spelling error or you just have an extra word, it will it, it might not show you any results. So keep your search kind of broad um, unless you find that you have a really difficult time narrowing it down, in which case I might put in both. Um, so subjects fiction, nonfiction, um, and format, same ebooks or audiobooks um, or read along books. That's for children mostly. Um, and availability is the other thing. What's available now versus having everything shown or what's coming soon. And lastly, audience. So this is handy um, because, for example, um, I don't have any kids, so I don't usually look for any children's books. You can t check off general content, and that will just show you, quote unquote, adult books. Um, I'm not sure if you can narrow both. Let's see. Oh, you can. So if you just want, let's say, general content and young adult, I could just check off both of them. And I will not see any children's books. And you can do that for children's books if you're just looking for some books for your kids. Um, so that's quite handy. Um, and let's see. And I believe these options will be saved. So let's go back. Oh, maybe I need to search for something first. Oh, OK. Forget what I said there. So if you want to save your preferences to save yourself a bit of time, um, you would adjust that here through preferences instead of search, as I said. Um, so availability, I'm just going to go available now. So I apply it, and I see there is a one because there is one option that I checked off. Um, and that's just, um, it's going to remember now that I only want to see what is currently available, nothing that has a wait list. Um, and I can undo that by going back just checking off everything and applying, and then it goes away because there's no preference set. So there's that. Um, and oh, let me quickly show you. Um, remember I said that Libby has really great list, curated lists for interesting reads. Um, if you scroll down, go to explore. This is um, all their curated titles. Um, 
and down here spotlights you know they have a ton of stuff that they curate and they're really fun if you're bored and you just want to see what's different or you want to be um, you want a recommendation this is kind of how they do it they do not have personal recommendations per se but they do have so many of these lists and it's quite handy for now if you're just looking for something fun or different to read um, let's go back Um, let's go check out a book. Um, okay, let's go check out a book. Let's see if this is available. Okay, so this is available, which is why it has a borrow option. Let's go ahead and borrow a book because I don't believe I showed you that. Okay, when I click borrow, this is the screen that pops up. If I wanted to, for some reason, to change how long I borrow the book, I can change it here, but I have my preference set to 21 days um, and you can change that in the settings, that little person up top here. And I can just hit borrow. Okay. And I could just open a book right now and I'm going to read it in Libby. And these are features that are quite similar to OverDrive, um, how you read and how you borrow. So let's click in here. Um, if I wanted to bring up options on both apps, it's the same thing. You would just tap the bottom of this of the page and it will come up. So I can go back to my library the library if I wanted to here or I could go to my shelf. I can get that out of the way. Um, I can go back out. <laughs> Um, and tap on the right, or if you're on your tablet, you would just swipe. If I wanted to, let's say, bookmark something, I would tap the bottom again. So there's options up here as well. I can save that if I wanted to come back to something. Um, you don't have to save your current page. If you're reading, it will automatically remember where you are so you do not have to bookmark this is for let's say you're saving a pack passage from you know 10 pages ago and you don't want to lose it you would use this bookmark tab right here and i just undid that so this is saved bookmark um the great thing about reading um digital books is virtually any book can be large print um i know that's quite handy um so that's the menu I, ch I just went into here, and I believe it is in reading settings. So see how there is um, a bar here. I can move it over and the text will increase. So increase is to the right. If you want to decrease it, it's to the left. The general option is in the center. You can also change settings. So if I want it, I didn't want to strain my eyes, if it's Nighttime, I can do a dark or sepia, et cetera. Um, and there is also um, open dyslexic, which may be helpful um, for those who need that option. Any questions so far? It went pretty quick. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back. Um, so let's go. Jenny, this is Susan. Yeah. Has Hi, Susan. Libby virtual... Hi, how are you? Good. Has Libby replaced <laughs> Overdrive more or less? Has it replaced Overdrive, you said? Replaced Overdrive. Yeah. Sorry, you're you out a little bit. Um, so I think you missed the first part. So Libby hasn't really replaced it um, because OverDrive is still compatible across more devices. So um, if you wanted to listen to an audiobook on your Kindle, I would recommend OverDrive. Libby, I don't think has that. Ha, uh, I don't think it has that um, 
ability yet, um, but they are continuously updating it. Um, so it hasn't replaced it. It just it depends on what device you're using it on. Um, and you know, if you prefer to have your hold uh, notification delivered by email, Overdrive is what does that. Libby will just have a notification in the app. So if you're not using your device, you, you may miss it. You do have a couple of days, but that is a di one difference that I noticed. Does that answer your question? Yes, Susan? thank you. Thank you, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And um, I do want to go over renewal. Um, if you haven't used over um, I want you to know that when you renew, um, it does take. His mic is on. Okay, Susan, I'm just going to meet you. Just meet yourself. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Okay, renewing. Um, you do need to wait until it's about three days before. I believe before you can renew. So if you're a week away, it won't, it might not let you renew. Um, but, and it's not an error or anything. They just want you to wait until it's closer for some reason. Um, but let me, I do remember one more thing I want to go over. Um, let's see. I'm just going to go. Do you have to return it or does it just take it away? Okay. So one thing is, first of all, this IBA. Oh, good question. You don't have to. It is automatic or return. Um, but if you wanted to renew, you have to manually do that because um, otherwise it will go to the next person once your time, um, your water time is up. Um, but no, you do not incur any fines or fees or anything like that. If it is at the end of your checkout period, it will automatically return the book for you or your book. Okay, so here you have um, two here. This is available immediately, which is like a plus sign. This one is not. Um, so your client will show you. It says nine weeks, um, and sometimes that may be true, but it also depends on how quickly people read and return. So don't get discouraged. If you see, you know, nine weeks under may not be um, that long. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, depending on what um, book is and how new it is as well. Okay. So I think that's all I have. For me, go back to the slide. Okay, so just some tips. Um, the wait list now can be long for certain books, especially new, newly published books. So I would go ahead and put multiples um, on different titles, um, just so you have something available. Um, you can always defer it, like I showed you. Um, you don't have to check it immediately, and you will still be at the front of the list. So that's important. You're not at the at the end of the waiting list. Um, and I would. Um, if you anticipate losing Wi-Fi, like I know some people who live um, in more remote areas, you might lose Wi-Fi or power goes out. Like I know I, that happens here sometimes with me. Um, download the titles ahead of time um, if you anticipate losing access. Um, and also, after you recommend a title for purchase on Overdrive, you can email Carol, our director, um, to make sure it's seen because sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle. Um, I know someone who did that recently, and she quickly got that um, the book she wanted. Um, so, any questions about Overdrive or Libby? before we move on. Okay. Okay, so the next resource I'm going to is RV Digital. Um, it is really simple and fairly easy to use. There's not much to it. Um, it allows you access to about 150 popular magazines. Um, there's no limits, no returns, no late fees. Um, you can check it out forever and will not ask you to return it, um, which is nice. Um, it does work on um, an iOS device, Android, Kindle Fire, or any browser. Um, so let's hop over. Okay, so I'm already logged in here, but normally there will be a button and you click that to get into it. Um, so it will look slightly different on your tablet, let's say. But the general idea is the same. Just look for a magnifying glass on the top of the bar. Um, and you can go ahead and search, um, or just browse. Um, 
And I want to say you can also search by genre. So if you're looking for, let's say, cooking, um, or food and cooking, rather, you could do that in a filter. And let's go ahead and check out a title. I would just click on it, and there's a blue check button. Um, you can check, check this box off if you want to on the magic check the next issue. Um, and there is a trick, rather a feature, that is available on your desktop as opposed to a tablet, let's say. Okay, so I'm going to click Start Reading. And I will load in just a minute. So while we're loading, I'm going to check out the message that we have. Okay. All right, so this is what it looks like. And you can, um, this is a desktop use, so remember that. Um, but this is the table of contents on the left. Right now, with pages, you're looking at a spread or layout with two pages. If you wanted to just hop over to articles here, that's individual articles. And let's click on that and see what it looks like. So it looks like this. Um, it is cleaner and easier to read. Um, so if you do want to narrow in on one article, I would recommend going to article view right here. Um, and this is scrolling down the process. If you want to go over the next one, you just click the arrow. Um, you can bookmark or a similar icon to Libby. Um, PDF view. And this view here is what you would need if you, let's say, wanted to print something. So it's quite handy if you want to save a recipe or an article for someone else to read, you can do that. There is the printer icon. And this is what it will look like. Um, hopefully you would have chosen something that's not the cover, but um, this is where you would save it as a PDF or you can print it if you have a printer attached. So that's quite handy um, to share. And unfortunately, that is not an option that is available on a tablet or um, a handheld device. I am not sure why, um, but at least I did not see it when I went there. Um, so that is pretty much it for reading on RB Digital. Um, any questions about this? Um, I have a question if you can hear me. This is Susan again. Um, one of the patrons asked for New York Magazine, and that is not yep. one that we have a subscription to. But could she go on New York Public Library and access their um, offerings? Mm -hmm. Um, that would entirely depend Could on what their lending rules are. Does she have a card through New York Public Library? I think she does, yes. Because I am not sure what New York Public Library has available. Um, okay. She does, okay. That is yeah. a question that I would need to do a little bit of research on, but that's not something that Clinton or Mid-Hudson offers, which is why we don't access to it. Um, so she checked in RB Digital and didn't find it. I, assume. I don't think they would have it. Yet. Right. Oh, well. Right. Did you say New York right. Magazine or something different? Yeah. This is what you're talking about. Okay, so she she was here. It was New York yeah. or New York. New York okay, so was just New York. let her know. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, New Yorker. A New Yorker. Because that is also available here. Yes. Um, but so if it is available, she can just check out here. If it is something that is not available, okay. digital, then she can get it, maybe check out near public library. Okay. okay. Um, and let's see. Yeah, there aren't many um, searches yep, you can thank do. You. Sorry, Susan. I just said that I will tell her. No problem. Yep. So Thank there you. aren't many searches you Thank can you. do on RB Digital. It is by genre. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you can search by the genre or the name. Um, and there's only one language. So there's that. So that's RB Digital. Okay. So let's hop over to Canopy. Um, I personally really love Canopy. 
um, and I hope you will too. Um, so this is the page you will see if you're, um, oh, I'm sorry, let me go back to my handy slide just to introduce it. Um, so with Canopy, as a Clinton patron, you get eight free movies a month per library card. So if, let's say, you and your spouse each have a library card, you can have um, double that. Um, it is per account. You get three days to watch the movie, um, in which case you would have to check check it out again or borrow it. If it is past those three days, it will use up another credit. Um, and the great thing about Campy is that it is not like your other streaming services like Netflix or Hulu. Their model is thoughtful entertainment, so there's a lot of um, educational resources on Canopy. They have documentaries, the great courses, four films, um, Criterion Collection picks, classic films, and independent films. And best of all, Canopy, whoops, there's a typo, Canopy Kids does not require viewing credits. So um, if you have children um, and you want some educational content for them, this is great um, to use. Um, let me just hop over to the tab. Okay, so this screen is pretty much what you would see if you click um, the link on the e-resources page. Um, if you do, if you do not have an account, you would just follow the process with adding your library card down here. But since I already have it, I can just log in to mine. Um, and I just did log in with Google because it is easier for me to not have another password to remember. Um, you can create when you log down there. Okay, so let me direct your attention to the top. Um, first, over here, that box with the number in it, eight, that means I have eight play credits left. Um, so at the end of the month, it will reset. Um, but for right now, I have eight to use until then. Um, here, under my name, I would access Canopy Kids, which I can also do here. Um, dashboard watch list, your viewing history, um, et cetera. Um, so if you know what you want to watch or if you want to search for a topic, um, and let me just go, let me just search I will ask you, um, do you mean cats with the title? in the uh, cats in the title um, or did you mean the subject right and if i find something i like i can click it or i can just view all the results um and here you can filter further you can search by videos subjects subjects or people um companies etc um so let's go in here um, and I want to say if you accidentally click and you did not mean to watch something, um, I think a couple of minutes have to go past before they count your credit, but I do not know the full um, duration. Um, but if you do accidentally click on something, just, just pause it or stop it. Um, so here I would just hit play. Um, and it would just play on my screen. Um, one handy thing about Canopy and the way I use it is through a streaming device. Um, so if you have something like a Roku or a Chromecast, you can cast it to your larger TV screen. Um, that is a side or an extra purchase, but it is an option and it's very nice. So you don't need to, let's say, watch on your phone or something if it's too small. Um, you can stream. Um, and Let's go over to Canopy Kids. So at the top here is where you go to Canopy Kids. And that is an entirely different site. It is only content for children. Um, I have not used this, so if someone does, please let me know what you think about it. Um, it does look very promising with all the options here. Um, so what you search for will be within um, Canopy Kids instead of regular Canopy. Um, and then if you don't, like if you accidentally leave, you can just click on exit to get at it. Um, and Canopy does curate um, special collections every month. For now, they are doing credit-free viewing, and that's just specifically for what's happening right now. So these films will not use up credits. So you can watch as many of these as you want, and it will not use up your credit. Um, 
if you hover over it, it will give you a little blurb and some ratings, how long a movie is. You can just click watch or add to your list if you wanted to um, sort of have a watch list going. Um, let me see. I think let's test it and I'll show you what it looks like. So I added, I click and added to my list this movie. And I'll go to my watch list. Okay. And there it is. And these are, this is the, what I added. These are some I added randomly. Um, but that's where it would reside. You can remove it if you don't want it. Um, and just hit remove. Um, that is about it for Kennedy. Any questions about this service? Okay, so we will hop over now to Mangle Languages. So Mangle Languages has about less than seven, over 70 languages and uses native speaker audio, um, has grammar notes and cultural notes, um, a lot of exercises and listening and reading to the language, quizzes, and understood versus literal translations. Um, um, I am not sure, honestly, how it compares to other language learning apps um, myself, um, but it does seem like a good supplement to language learning, I will say. Um, you can download lessons to learn offline um, if you wish. Um, if you know you're going to lose access, you don't have to just stream it. Um, and there are, of course, depending on the language, a different amount of resources available. So. Um, there are way more um, Spanish um, resources than, let's say, um, Korean, um, from what I observed. Um, but it is a good supplement, so it's worth checking out if you just want to dive in um, to learning a new language. Um, so let's go over to it. So when you click that link, it will take you here. Do not worry, this is the correct link. Um, this is a way to authenticate um, your library card, but it will take you to Mangle Languages. Um, and after you enter your card, if it is your first time, I believe it will ask you to register because this is the screen you see and you can click sign up if it is um, your first time registering. I will just click login. Uh, yes, so I was trying to learn Korean <laughs> just for a sh very short period of time. Um, but let's go back out. And this is pretty much what you will see on the app. Um, you can search for a language right in here. Um, or you can scroll down. Um, usually the more popular languages are at the front here at the top. Um, so let's go into, let's say, let's go into Spanish. So if I click a new language, I can hit start learning. Ah, and I did do one before, which is why you see this one is green. Um, but you would just click these small little modules um, to get started. And I do want to go into one to show you what it looks like. Um, okay, you can click start. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> so one thing I do find helpful is that there um, is a highlight for what a word is in English and then what a word is in the other language. So when a language has a different syntax, it's handy to know where they are located within the sentence. Um, so that's one thing I did notice and you can highlight it and it will have the pronunciation at the very top in the red bubble, right? Um, and I could go through them. Uh, okay, so the bar at the top, if you wanted to scroll through, um, you can just to see what it is. 
so at the very top here, um, they do have explanations, this grammar note. Um, let's go here. Okay, so that is kind of helpful. I will not click again to put you guys through that, but I am trying to find there is a cultural note usually, but maybe not here. But at the very top of the bar is where you would skip if you find yourself um, thinking that this lesson is too easy. You can just go through here. Um, let's go. Let's go out of there. Okay, and it will save your progress um, as noted here. Um, and they do have a tool here, the very top, that will allow you to translate um, something from any one language to the other. Um, it is helpful if you just want a text um, answer. Um, so just what it looks like if I wanted to say hello, right, but it does not have um, a way to sound out the pronunciation. So I would recommend Google Translate for that. It is a way more robust tool um, so it can supplement your learning if you are interested um, because it will sound out the language for you and has a lot of different options. Um, and that's just Google Translate. Um, not much else for Mango languages. I I have to confess I have not played around with it a lot. Um, does anyone have questions about this resource? Does it go beyond introductory language exploration? Good question. Um, I think depending on the, the language, so Spanish seems to, do you see the far side here? And it's going down. Um, it's, there are more specialized units for languages that are more popular, but as for intermediate level stuff, um, I don't think so. There, it's not as robust as um, some other types of language learning software I have seen. Um, so like I said, it's probably better for kind of introductory learning. Um, but as far as I can tell, um, not a lot of intermediate. Um, does that answer your question? It does, thank um, Okay. Maybe I'll show you a cultural note. I know for sure Korean. I probably have one. Nope. Um, well, maybe it didn't. I won't put you through this, but there are cultural notes in there, so it can be handy. Understanding, for example, in Korean, there are honorifics, which is not something we have in English, um, but they will explain that and why it's being used. Um, so that is handy if you ever decide to travel. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we will hop over to Universal Class, and that will be the last resource for today. Okay, so with Universal Class, there's um, over 500 um, CEU level courses covering over 30 subject areas. Um, you can take the classes in certificate mode or video only mode. And um, certificate classes, you do have to complete the lessons in order. Um, and there are assignments, exams, principal lessons, and structure feedback, um, and class email and discussions. And you get a continuing education unit um, certificate. Um, so it's mostly for, well, the certificate would be um, helpful for professionals who need a license to practice certain things, or if they want or need continuing education credits. Um, 
And the video only mode is basically how it sounds. It's strictly video. There is no an interaction with the instructor or your fellow classmates. Um, so if you're just, you just want to watch the videos, you can do that or you can do the certificate class um, if you're in really serious about um, learning something. Um, find that the video, you know, it's, it is the same as you get in the certificate class, um, but without um, feedback and doing some assignments, um, it may not be as helpful if you really want to dive into a subject and learn. Um, so let's hop over here. And universal class, like I said before, it does not have an app, so you do need to uh, use it on your desktop. Oh, and I am. I'll have to sign. This is different. Okay. Okay, so you see the courses here because I signed up for a course. This one, as you can see, is view only mode. This one with the lessons completed and lessons go is the certificate class. But before I go into them, let's go over to the top here. Um, typically, you will see the core catalog. If not, then just click this button here. You search for a subject or a course. You can see I search for marketing and Excel. Um, so, if I hit search, that might find last. It will show me because you search for marketing. Um, the classes they have available in marketing. Um, from what I can tell, some classes are hit or miss, um, but I think it's worth checking out anyway. Um, so that's for the search. You can also, let's go back to the course catalog, go by subject. Um, so if you want to take a class in accounting, there's 40 courses. Or if you want to do crafts and hobbies, there are 70 here. Um, so tons of stuff. I will say a lot of them are um, beginner level. Um, and you will see a lot of um, 101s, um, like the bird watching class um, that I, I entered. Um, but there are also some advanced ones. Um, I know or Excel is an advanced Excel class, so I'm personally implementing that myself um, just to further my professional development. Um, so let's let's go into one of them. Um, let's go into let's see find this. Okay, so these are popular courses up here. Um, let's go into fundraising, and I'll see I'll show you what it looks like. You can click join this course at the very top if you know you're interested in taking this class. Um, this will give me lessons, exams, and this is if you do a certificate class, not if you do video. Um, but you can also just scroll down, you know, you want to see what it's about. Maybe the title is not very um, descriptive. You can take a look at what um, the course offers. Um, and also there are some suggested related courses you want, you want to do that. Um, and also some comments that, sorry, the lesson plan is at the bottom. And you have the lesson rating. Um, so let's go into this one. And I'll click join course. And it'll ask me whether I want to do the certificate class or video. Um, I will show you the certificate class just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so there we are. This is for my classes now. And I can enter the course. And the red up here are you, their announcements, but red just means you have not done the task yet. And you would go and do it. This asks you to review learning outcomes. And the green will pop up. Once you read it, return to the class page, it will be a green button. Um, and this just kind of sets you up to what you expect to learn from the class. So as you can see, green. Um, this is red because we haven't done it yet. Um, the first lesson is unlocked for you. If you want to get to the next one, you do have to complete this first lesson. And we can go in and see what it looks like. Um, so it's pretty long, I have to say. I'm not pleased with how the formatting is, but um, it is very little and readable um, and broken down into uh, different segments. Um, so you just read through this. Sometimes there's videos, etc. Um, at the bottom um, is the assignments or what you have to complete um, before it will allow you to go to the next lesson. So these all to be green. You have to do, um, you have to listen to the announcements, do the pulp surveys, and then assignments. Um, so that is that. Um, and these buttons here. So this is the lesson video. If you click that, it will show you. And presumably this is also the video you will see if you just did the video mode. You will not see um, all the other extra stuff that we are seeing now. And so let's say I started this class and now I changed my mind. I don't want to go through all the assignments. I just want to watch the videos. You can do that. 
um, top. Sorry, it would be. I'll go back to my classes. Ah, sorry, it is this top that I was thinking of the menu here under manage courses. And here is where you would change um, your view mode. Um, if you wanted to change it from certificate to video or vice versa, you can withdraw from the course. If you do withdraw, um, you will not be able to rejoin this course for 60 days. So changes will email you that. Um, unless you are here, of course, you can just withdraw from it. Um, and it'll tell you that you know, it will be graded and you will do it obviously because I didn't do the course. So I can just click and withdraw from it or just click out. Um, let's go back to match courses. Um, so if I wanted to change the new mode of fundraising, uh, it will tell you, remind you what that means for each mode. Um, so video only, none of this other stuff. You only have video. This has all of this extra stuff for the normal certificate mode. So right here in choose video mode only, and it will change. And let's go and see what it looks like. So now, did I not change it? Let's see what it looks like. Ah, something went wrong. Not sure why I did that. Let me try a different one. Let's say more. Okay, this is what you should see for video mode. Um, I'm not sure why the font one didn't change. Um, but this is the format. You can see that I can jump to any lesson I want to, um, without having to complete the first one. Um, so if I wanted to just go do lesson six, I can do that. Um, and then just play through the video. Um, that's pretty much it for video mode. There's nothing else you can do through this except to watch it. Um, I think that is it. Does anyone have questions for Universal Laws? Okay. No, this has helped a lot, Jenny. Thank you. So, no questions. We have someone. Okay. Okay. No problem. Um, before we leave, I just want to remind everyone there is virtual tech help if you want. Um, things at tech help at Gmail, and you can always email me. You know, if you feel more comfortable just saying my email, you can do that. Mine is Clinton Programming.